Yeah. Four, let's go. Yeah. Jose. I did that twice. Wait, no. Jose. Guillermo. Alright, I want What's you to your step card? further away from me this next time. Amber. We all know them well. Whether they're weighing down our backpacks or our wallets, as students, textbooks are a heavy load on all of us. As a student coming out of Highland Community College with my two-year associate's degree, I've had to take many, many courses, and I've had to buy many textbooks. I'm very familiar with the dread that comes at the beginning of every quarter when I go to the bookstore and have to pay an arm and a leg for these bad rules. I'm also very aware of the feeling of defeat that comes at the end of every quarter when I try to sell these back for a measly sum. Today I want to urge you to fight back against textbook prices. Today I want to urge you to join me in opening a student-owned and run bookstore. Textbook prices are too high. As students we really feel this. According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, we pay 20% of our tuition costs and fees and it goes directly to textbooks. On average, we spend $900 on textbooks per four-year four year university school year. Now, this may not seem like that much, but you have to know a couple more facts about these textbooks. Also, according to the Government Accountability Office, textbooks are rising at four times the inflation rate in the United States. So that means if a person continues going to school, eventually they will not be able to afford it. And here we all go to school for, to get an education and to make it available to ourselves to make more money in our lives. So where's the benefit here, you know? Additionally, if you're taking a class where the textbook you're taking does not benefit your major, you even have even less long-term use for this textbook. So again, you're suffering even more. According to Jessica Fashant of Flagley College, she quoted, when new editions of books come out, they generally add like a table here, a diagram there, change the order of say a chapter in it, maybe add about, I don't know, 10, 20 pages, such as this one here, the seventh edition compared to the sixth. Washington state budget cuts also affect us with this. According to the Seattle Times, writer Catherine Long. Starting in fall quarter, we will be paying about 11% more at state universities. And according to the Highline Community College Thunderword, which Russell Casavier wrote an article for, Highline tuition will go up by 11% come fall quarter. Now, given the fact that textbooks and tuition rise at the same general rate, that means these could be going up by equivalent to the tax we pay. And if it's, say, a physics book or a math book like this, that means instead of $130, you could be paying $145 before tax. And that's just absurd. I have a solution to this problem, though. We should organize and establish a student-organized, owned, and run bookstore. It would be student-run, which would reduce overhead because there'd be no outside employees. It'd be self-sustaining because everyone who works there would be of the student body. And also, because everyone there would be of the student body, there would be a common interest in saving money, not trying to pick up a large profit index. I have many textbooks for my 2011 school year alone. I chose not to sell them back because I got tired of getting about a fourth of what I paid for them back. And I predict if everyone took, say, one quarter to three quarters worth of books, compiled them all, we'd have enough to run a bookstore to supply people for two quarters before we'd even have to order out for special request books. For example, if I had three books per a 20 classroom class of people and we all put them together, we would have 60 books. Now if they're all from the same class, say as our communications class, that'd be 60 communi or that would be 20 communications books, which would be fantastic. We'd have communication students the next quarter very in good shape. Now, it wouldn't take many people to run this. It'd be quite easy to start up. And I share this idea with a colleague of mine. His name is David Rientes. He was a former student of UW Community College, <coughs> UW University, and he took computer science as his major. He told me that he had spent a lot of time buying a lot of computer science books and going towards being an engineer. His books, he told me, were on average $175 a piece. 
He also told me that he felt the idea of the student-run bookstore would be fantastic because the students could get together, save a ton of money, which benefits a lot of students when they have to take high-level classes they don't need to look for in hindsight. How bad would the world be off be if we didn't take up this solution? Well, either way, whether we do it or not, this school year coming up, we're going to be paying an extra 12% for our tuition, not counting books alone, which is going to hurt our wallets as it is. So if we don't fix it, I mean, some of us may have to drop out if we can't afford school. How good could this be? Well, going off what I said, if everyone just compiled their books without even putting any money down to buy new ones, we could already help out a ton of people save a lot of money by selling them at a lowered cost. And that way we could help out the students in a small way. And we could build up over time, buy more to add to our stock. The important thing here is to take proactive stops, uh, proactive steps to fight this ridiculous prices we're paying for textbooks. <coughs> to save a good deal and to help out the student body would be a good benefit of this. Make a difference. Join me in building a bookstore today.